Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott, and you have wandered on to the number one prog channel on YouTube. Yeah, it's the Prog Corner, man. And uh, today I'm going to be going back to an album that was dropped in November of 2023. Uh, you know, the, the, the problem with doing uh, your best of uh, at the beginning of December is you know you're going to miss some stuff last year. I miss Verbal Delirium's uh, Conundrum. Would have been in my top five of the year. And here we go. No different for 2023, man. Regna, brand new band out of Barcelona. Well, they're not brand new. They put out a uh, EP in uh, 2015 called Meridian. I haven't heard it. I, I will be correcting that. I need to check it out. Same lineup. But here we go. This is their first uh, actual full-length album. It's called Cinema. Um and I am really digging this one, man. So who is Regna and why am I so jazzed about these guys? Well, about two months ago, Miguel Gonzalez uh, contacted me on Twitter and is like, hey, man, I got a band you might like. He sent me a link to their first single, Tangent, and I really liked it. Sent me the rest of the album. And I am just totally in love with it. Uh, we're going to talk more about uh, the band here in a little bit. But, uh, you know, they... Uh, they kind of combine the best of British, Italian, and Scandinavian prog. I do hear a little bit of early yes. I definitely hear some wobbler. Um, Miguel told me that this was like a love letter to the American way of doing prog. I'm not really hearing that so much. Maybe a little bit of Neil Morris here and there. The production here is really dry, really clean, uh, very 70s-like. Uh, there's none of that big drum sound or those crunchy prog metal guitars. This is very much uh, an early 70s sounding record. And I love that. There's six songs, 46 minutes. There's a minute long bonus track if you have the CD or the LP. Uh, so we're going to talk about the six songs that make up this album proper. It starts with uh, a little opening piece called Opening Credits. It's a minute long. And you get this Dirty Hammond in E minor. And you get these chords and he's doing arpeggios. And the chord progression he's playing here isn't the same as you hear in the epic. But it's similar enough that it does kind of tie things together. Good opening. The next song is the first real song called Return To. It stays in E minor, so that first track definitely feels like a prelude to it, you know, kind of a continuation. Uh, it starts with the two guitars playing in E, and then you get a little Pink Floyd Hammond. And what you hear with these two guitar players is that uh, they're playing very similar tones uh, in that, uh, let's see, the two guys are Alejandro Dominguez and Xavier Martinez are the two guitar players. And uh, as a result of having two guitar players, they do a lot of rhythm guitar and they do a lot of, you know, playing thirds and stuff like that, which always sounds great, but real hard to reproduce live. Um, then you get a, a five, four section kicks in in this song and you finally get to hear the vocals and that's Mark Ia. And uh, he's got a really cool voice, man. It's a baritone. Uh, it's a little bit different. I mean, this style of music, you generally tend to, you know, envision somebody like John Anderson or a real high tenor uh, singing this kind of music. But uh, Mark's voice is very grounded and it's uh, really cool. I like it a lot. He's got a fantastic voice. As the song comes in, uh, the drums like are kind of real lazy in the background. Uh, the drummer is Eric Lovato. Trust me, he gets in the groove soon enough. He's just chilling. He's faking you out, man. Uh, uh, it's really cool. Uh, like I said, Mark's baritone, his vocals do kind of remind me a little bit of uh, Alessio Calandriello from La Cosienza di Senzo, but he's a uh, Zeno, rather, but he's singing in English instead of Italian, but there's like kind of a mumbly nature to the way he sings. I actually hear more Mark Truiak from uh, Unitopia, but you know, whatever. Miguel, his keyboards here definitely sound in real Uriah Heep, like uh, Ken Hensley, little Keith Emerson there. And the rhythm guitar, you know, I talked about that. You don't hear a lot of guys just playing rhythm guitar anymore. Think about Terry Cat. Man, that guy could solo the roof down, but he also played a lot of just chords, you know, clean guitar, playing chords, very early 70s, and I love it. A lot of twists and turns to this song. It's a great opener. Maybe the best song in the album. It's just dynamite. 
Next up is a song called Spyglass. It's eight minutes long. It starts with the acoustic guitar finger picked, and we're in B here, little Mellotron in the background. The next time this uh, figure comes up, the Mellotron's gonna be way higher in the mix. Then you get a little strummed acoustic guitar, and uh, we're uh, playing D, C, A minor to G. Mark's vocals come in, and then you get a, a Moog and the drums come on in. You get a little bit of a Mediterranean feel with this song, and then you get a bunch of like weird time signatures, a whole like weird, uh, freaky prog workout. I love it. The vocals come back in. Then you get another instrumental section where that Moog and the rhythm guitar really dominate. Then you get a synth solo. You don't get a lot of soloing in this album. Because I don't think either guitar player gets a solo, but Mark... Uh, his vocals, you know, come in here uh, after that synth solo. Uh, you got that strummed acoustic section again. I just want to mention uh, Arturo Garcia's bass player towards the tail end of this song. Really, really strong. Another great song. And then you get Tangent. Next song is 8 minutes and 40 seconds long. This was the first song that I'd heard by these guys. Miguel had sent me this track. And this is a really weird song, man. It opens with this odd, like, Afro beat, almost OCB. So, do 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 And then the other guitarist comes on top of it, a third higher. do 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 What I like is that only one of the guitarists is bending. The other one's playing it totally straight. The second guitar guitar player, the one playing the third higher, actually bends a little bit. It's it's really smart, man, how they do this. Then you get a section of 11.8, and you realize, yeah, this is pure prog bliss, man. I love this stuff. Bass line comes in, in five, then the vocals come in. Then you get this really cool gentle giant breakdown. Just awesome. Another instrumental section led by the Moog. This is a very spiky, angular song. A lot of it is in five. Uh, the piano comes in at the 545 mark, and you get all the shifting tonality. Uh, and then at the end, you get the piano picking up that that guitar riff. It's really smart. Uh, then that you get that double guitar thing again at the end. It's really great song, really interesting, really angular, very fun, uh, fantastic. Next up is a, a 90 second piece called Dramatis uh, Personae. And again, this is just like a, a prelude to the big epic that follows. Uh, this is all Mellotron, and we're in D minor. So, of course, you know, it's going to make you think of Watcher of the Skies a little bit. Totally different to Mellotron patch here. This is all uh, uh, the, the Woodwind patch. And I think the uh, Watcher of the Sky was uh, Woodwind and Brass together. I could be wrong. But then that leads up to the final song. On the album proper, the actual epic, it's called Accolade. It's 20 minutes and 28 seconds long. And yeah, if you're like me, man, you want an, you want an epic to end this thing, and they do it right, man. It starts out with like a, it sounds like a Wurlitzer, some kind of electric piano in D minor. Then you get another 11-8 figure that comes into view with some real interesting, surprising chord changes. Like, I always like to predict what the next chord is, right? And when, when you surprise me with a different chord, that always makes me happy. Then the main riff comes in. We're in five again. These guys are really comfortable in five. Uh, it, it seems like about... 70% of this album exists in a 5-8 kind of mode, and I really love that. We're in A minor here now, and you get the synth and the acoustic guitars, and then Miguel's like playing all this stuff on the on the Moog, and he's using lots of grace notes, man. I'm going to call him Grace Note Gonzalez, because uh, he just plays it like crazy, kind of making me think of how, you know, Wakeman always used all those grace notes and those embellishments. It just sounds amazing. At the two-minute mark, you got the bass and the Mellotron and D minor. And, uh, you know, Eric, uh, the drummer, uh, Eric Lovato, he's got a thing that he likes to do. He's got some wood blocks on his rack, and it sounds really good. More of that. More of that, Eric. Uh, you, the one thing missing from this band maybe is a little bit of personality. And, uh, you know, little things like that can go a long way towards making you a little bit different than everybody else. You get like a Circus Hammond coming in, then the Wurlitzer comes back. You get all kinds of weird, complicated time changes here, making me think a whole bunch of Wobbler. You get a jazzy little uh, vocal section, then some strummed acoustic guitar in A minor. Then you get this really cool dark acoustic section. Uh, 
I really enjoyed that. And then you had another whole thing with the piano coming in and Mark's mumbling about being alone and stuff. But the highlight of the album is towards the end from like the 12 and a half minute mark to the 18 minute mark. Yeah, that five and a half minutes of complete instrumental prog craziness is just amazing. And then the last two minutes brings it way down with uh, you know, Mark singing and Miguel playing piano. And it's really beautiful. It's a nice way to end the album. I kind of wish it would have ended with a bang. Kind of ends with a whimper, but I still love the epic. Overall, man, this is a debut album. Are you kidding me? Uh, Miguel Gonzalez, Mark Ia, Eric Lovato, Arturo Garcia, Alejandro Dominguez, and Xavier Martinez. I want to mention all six of them again because they deserve some recognition for coming up with an amazing album. If I would have gotten this a little bit earlier, it definitely would have been in my best of 2023. Uh, I think it probably would have cracked the top 10. It is that good, man. So what's my score going to be? You know, the more I listen to it, the higher the score goes, man. But I am giving this puppy 9 out of 10. It's that good for a debut album. It's just insane. Uh, it's a record you really, really need to hear. Uh, but uh, anyway, I just wanted to uh, do a quick album review today. And, uh, you know, Sunday, we're doing a great prog stream, man. Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, we are doing the best uh, Vandergraaf Generator track. So join us for that. And don't forget, this Friday, every Friday, in fact, on Prog Radio, uh, we have the Prog Corner playlist at noon Eastern and with a replay Saturday at 6 p.m. So don't miss that. All the stuff that we talk about on the channel all week, Kevin over there on Prog Radio is going to play it. And, uh, you know, so tune in then. Uh, you know, let's get his numbers up high. Anyway, I love you guys. Uh, peace in the Middle East. Free Tibet and God save the king. Save King Chucky. Save King Charles III. That son of a gun needs your saving right now. Well, we could all use a little bit of saving about right now. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Peace.